The first, uh, may it please the tribunal, is the affidavit of Dr. Rudolf uh, Mildner. I, the undersigned, Dr. Rudolf Mildner, made the following affidavit in answer to cross interrogations by representatives of the Office of United States Chief of Counsel relating to my affidavit of 29 March 1946, made in response to questions by Dr. Kaufman for presentation to the International Military Tribunal. Question number one. Confirm or correct the following biographical data. Uh, answer. December 1939, I became chief of the Gestapo office in Chemnitz. In March 1941, I became chief of the Gestapo office in Katowice. In September 1943, I became commander of the SIPO and SD in Copenhagen. In January 1944, I became inspector of the SIPO and SD in Casso. On 15 March 1944, I was made deputy chief of groups 4A and 4B of the RSHA. In December 1944, I became commander of the SIPO in Vienna. In December 1944, I became deputy inspector of the SIPO in Vienna. All of these appointments after January 1943 were made by Kaltenbrunner as chief of the security police and SD. Question number two. Is it not true that while you were Gestapo leader of Katowice, you frequently sent prisoners to Auschwitz for imprisonment or execution, that you had contacts with the political department at Auschwitz during the time you were chief of the Gestapo at Katowice with regard to inmates sent from the district of Katowice, that you visited Auschwitz on several occasions, that the Gestapo SS frequently met within Auschwitz, and you sometimes attended the trial of prisoners, that in 1942 and again in 1943, Pursuant to orders by Gruppenführer Mueller, Chief of Gestapo, the Commandant of Auschwitz, showed you the extermination plants, that you were acquainted with the extermination plants at Auschwitz, since you had to send Jews from your territory to Auschwitz for execution. Answer, yes, these are true statements of fact. <coughs> question number three. With respect to your answer to question number five in your affidavit of 29 March 1946, did all orders for arrest, commitment to, punishment and individual executions in concentration camps come from RSHA. Was the regular channel for orders of individual executions from Himmler through Kaltenbrunner to Mueller? 
then to the concentration camp commandant. Uh, did uh, did uh, RSHA have supervision of all concentration camps for administration, utilization of labor, and maintenance of discipline? That should have been W instead of R, I'm sorry. Answer? The answer is yes to each of the three questions. Question number 3A. Is it true that conferences took place between o SS Open Group and Führer Kaltenbrunner and SS Open Group and Führer Pohl, chief of the WH and chief of concentration camp? Was Dr. Kaltenbrunner acquainted with conditions in concentration camp? Answer, yes. And because of these conferences, and on the occasion of discussions with the two AMT chiefs, Gruppenfuhrer Mueller IV and Gruppenfuhrer Neve RSHA, the chief of SIPO and SD, SS Open Gruppenfuhrer Dr. Kaltenbrunner should be acquainted with conditions in concentration camps. I learned from SS Gruppenfuhrer Mueller, chief of Amt 4, that regular conferences took place between RSHA and Amt Group D of WVHA. Question number four. Is it not a fact that in July or August of 1944, an order was issued to commanders and inspectors of the SIPO and SD by Himmler through Kaltenbrunner as chief of the SIPO and SD <coughs> to the effect that members of all Anglo-American commando groups should be turned over to the SIPO by the armed forces, that the SIPO was to interrogate these men and shoot them after questioning, that the killing was to be made known to the armed forces by a communique stating that the commando group had been annihilated in battle and that this decree was classified top secret and was to be destroyed immediately after reading? Answer, yes. Question number five. <laughs> With respect to your answer to question number seven of your affidavit of 29 March 46, is it not a fact that, A, after you sent a telegram to Mueller, requesting that the Jewish persecution be stopped, you received an order by Himmler that the Jewish actions were to be carried out. B, that you then flew to Berlin for the purpose of talking with the chief of the SIPO and SD, Kaltenbrunner, personally, but that since he was absent, you saw his deputy, Mueller, head of Office 4 of the RSHA, who in your presence wrote a message to Himmler containing your request that the persecutions of the Jews in Denmark be stopped. C, that shortly after your return to Copenhagen, you received a direct order by Himmler sent through Kaltenbrunner as chief of the SIPO and SD, stating that, quote, the anti-Jewish actions are to be started immediately, quote, quote. D, that for the purpose of carrying out this action, the, quote, special commando Eichmann, quote, close, which was under the Gestapo, was sent from Berlin to Copenhagen for the purpose of deporting the Jews in two ships which it had chartered. 
Answer, yes to each question, A, B, C, and D. Question number six, is it not a fact that the action of, quote, Special Commando Eichmann, quote, close, was not a success? That Mueller ordered you to make a report explaining the causes for the lack of success in deporting of Jews, and that you sent this report directly to the chief of the CIPO and SD, Kaltenbrunner. Answer, yes, that is right. I have read the above questions and answers as written and swear that the statements are true and correct. Etc. And now may it please the uh, tribunal, the cross affidavit of Wilhelm Hertel. And the affidavit which I am about to read of Wilhelm Hertel, dated uh, 10 April 46, will become Exhibit 792 U.S. Uh, I, the undersigned, I, the undersigned, Dr. Wilhelm Hertel, nothing coming through here. Nothing coming through here. Make the following affidavit in response to cross-interrogation relating to an affidavit executed by me on 30 March 46, answering questions put by Dr. Kaufman for presentation to the International Military Tribunal. One, with respect to question number three, please give the following information. A, explain the basis of your statement that when persons belonging to the SD were transferred to Einsatz commandos of the CIPO and SD, they resigned from the SD. Your attention is invited to the fact that Ollendorf, the head of the SD, has testified to the contrary. B, explain the basis for your statement that Einsatz commandos had nothing to do with executions. Your attention is invited to the fact that your testimony in this regard is likewise in direct conflict with the head of the SD, Ollendorf. C, what was Hitler's so-called commissar order and when did you first acquire knowledge of this order? With respect to 1A, in my affidavit, I did not speak of a permanent separation from the SD, but of a leave of absence for the time of activity with an Einsatz commando. By that was meant that they did not exercise their SD functions during this time, but that this function was inactive. With respect to 1B, my affidavit appears to have been misunderstood concerning this point. I did not state that Einsatz commandos had nothing to do with execution, but only that not all Einsatz commandos were concerned with execution. I mentioned as an example the Einsatz commandos in Africa, Hungary, and Slovakia. In connection with that, I said that these Einsatz commandos had nothing to do with executions. By that I meant not directly with the actual executions. Translators note, i.e. with the actual killing. With respect to 1C, I myself do not know the so-called Commissar Order of Hitler. Dr. Stahlecker who commanded an Einsatz group of the SIPO and SD in Russia, told me in the summer of 1942 that the executions of commissars and Jews were carried out because of the commissar order, wherein the extermination of the Jews as the bearers of Bolshevism was established. Two, with respect to question four, is it not a fact that Heydrich as chief of SIPO and SD, 
gave the initial instructions to Eichmann concerning the extermination of Jews. That in the RSHA, Eichmann's immediate superior was Mueller, chief of the Gestapo. That Mueller was first the deputy of Heydrich and later of Kaltenbrunner. With respect to two, yes, I heard from Eichmann probably in August 1944 that Heydrich had given him these directives. It is also correct that Mueller, chief of the Gestapo, was Eichmann's immediate superior. As far as I know, Mueller was the deputy of Heydrich and later of Kaltenbrunner, only on the sector of the Gestapo, as likewise were the other op chiefs on their sectors. Three, with respect to question five, is it not a fact that you know from your discussions with Kaltenbrunner and with Eichmann that they came from the same community in Austria and were exceptionally close friends. That Eichmann always had direct access to Kaltenbrunner and that they frequently conferred together. That Kaltenbrunner was well pleased with the manner in which Eichmann carried out his duties. That Kaltenbrunner was very interested in the extermination work performed by Eichmann. That you personally know that Kaltenbrunner went to Hungary for the purpose of discussing the extermination program in Hungary with officials of the Hungarian government and with Eichmann and other members of his staff in Hungary. Please confirm or correct these statements and make any statement necessary to clarify your answer. With respect to three, I heard from Eichmann that he knew Kaltenbrunner from Lent and that they served together in 1932 in an SS Sturm company there. I do not know that they were extraordinarily close friends or that Eichmann always had direct access to Kaltenbrenner and that they conferred frequently. I do not know the details about their official relationship. I do not know whether Kaltenbrenner also had conferences concerning the program of extermination of Jews in Hungary during his stays in Hungary in the spring of 44. Winkelmann, the former higher SS and police leader in Hungary, must know exactly about that, since according to my knowledge, he visited the persons of the Hungarian government together with Kaltenbrunner. Four, with respect to question six, A, is it not known to you that Mueller chief of the Gestapo, always conferred with Kaltenbrunner on matters of importance relating to the functions of his office, particularly with respect to executions of special inmates. B. Did you know that Kaltenbrunner was the higher SS and police leader and state secretary for security in Austria after the Anschluss until his appointment as chief of the RSHA? a period of five years, and during which time his attention was devoted exclusively to police and security matters. C. What is the basis of your statement that the intelligence service took up the main part of Kaltenbrunner's attention and all his interests? With respect to 4A, details concerning the official relationship between Mueller and Kaltenbrunner are not known to me. However, I could note on several occasions that Mueller was with Kaltenbrunner to report about the work of his department. With respect to 4B, Kaltenbrunner was not exclusively occupied with police and security matters during his activity as higher SS and police leader in Austria or as State Secretary for Security, respectively. Without a doubt, he had political interests besides, since the higher SS and police leaders were the representatives of Reichsfuhrer SS Himmler in all matters. With respect to 4C, I could note that by virtue of my official relationship with him, members of other departments 
also frequently expressed themselves in the direction that he favored and furthered Amp 3, and particularly Amp 6 and 7. With respect to question 7, answer the following. A. What did you personally have to do with concentration camps? And what, therefore, is the basis for your answer to this question? B. Did you know that all orders for commitments to, <coughs> releases from, and executions in concentration camps came from the RSHA? C. Did you know that the RSHA gave direct orders to commandants of concentration camps state any such orders of which you have personal knowledge? D. What are the atrocities committed in concentration camps to which you refer in your answer to this question? And when and in what manner did you acquire knowledge that atrocities were committed in concentration camps? With respect to 5A, Personally, I had nothing at all to do with concentration camps. However, I liberated a number of persons from concentration camps and therefore know the difficulties that were made by the concentration camp staffs who always called attention to orders of the RSHA and the SS. WVHA, isn't it? I, I couldn't read it here, sir. It's blurred on the mimeograph copy. That's why I hesitated. I think it should be WVHA. <coughs> In such cases, since the inmates were needed for the armament industry. With respect to 5B, it is known to me that orders for commitments to the concentration camps and discharges therefrom came from the RSHA. I did not know that all such orders came from the RSHA. I have no knowledge of orders for executions by the RSHA. With respect to 5C, I do not know any details and do not know personally any orders concerning this. In the cases in which I intervened for discharges, I addressed myself either to Calton Brunner directly or to OMP 4. When the processing was of long duration, I received the answers several times from officials of OMP 4 that difficulties had come about through the WVHA of the SS. With respect to 5D, when Hungary was occupied by German troops in March 44, several of my Hungarian acquaintances went to concentration camps. After I had achieved their liberation, they told me of bad treatment and atrocities in Mauthausen concentration camps. At that time, I sent an official communication concerning this to the director of the Lentz Gestapo office with the request to inquire into this matter with the concentration camp commandant, Zerice. Zerice, however, denied this as I was informed in the reply. In August 44, Eichmann told me that there were also extermination camps besides concentration camps. Six, with respect to question nine, what is the basis for your opinion that Kaltenbrunner opposed Hitler and Himmler on the program for the physical extermination of European Jewry? With respect to six, Kaltenbrunner told me after his conference with representatives of the International Red Cross in March 45 that he was against Hitler's and Himmler's program in the question of the extermination of the European Jews. In my response to question nine, that Kaltenbrunner had given no orders for killing of Jews, the words, quote, according to my knowledge, quote, close, are missing. Seven, with respect to question 11, who was the American that you told Kaltenbrunner you had contacted in a neutral country in 1943? Did Kaltenbrunner agree to travel to Switzerland with you to meet a representative of the Allied powers with whom you were in touch through the Austrian resistance, resistance movement 
and if so, whom? With respect to seven. The American liaison man in 1943 was a member of the USA legation in Lisbon. I am no longer familiar with his name. The connection to an American organization existed only with the coming of fall 1944. Carlton Brunner's acquiescence to travel there was given me about 20 April 1945. Eight. With respect to question 12, on what date did Carlton Brunner order the commandant of Morthausen concentration camp to hand over the camp to approaching troops? And at whose insistence did Carlton Brunner issue this order, and for what reason? With respect to eight. I cannot state the exact date of Carlton Brunner's order to the commandant of Morthausen concentration camp to hand over the camp to the approaching troops. It should have been during the last days of April 1945. It is not known to me at whose insistence and for which reason he gave this order. Possibly this was connected with his discussions with SS Stand and Darton Fuhrer Becker, whom I met with him at the time. Above statements are true. I made this declaration voluntarily and without compulsion, etc.